This year, I have not been able to get enough of boundary-pushing, genre-breaking, and frankly disturbing works of incredible fiction by amazing women writers from around the world. And Jawbone is no different. Written by Ecuadorian writer Monica Ojeda and translated from the Spanish by Sarah Booker, this is a phenomenal piece of horror-tinged literary fiction. So many of the great works of fiction that I've read over the last few years have been by women that push against the concept of womanhood, that create villainous, monstrous women, that tackle dangerous and frightening themes that so many women writers just will not touch. Themes of girlhood and puberty and the relationship between mothers and daughters, female role models and the young impressionable women that they are in charge of. And Jawbone tackles all of this and more while also being a very cleverly written, cleverly structured, experimental and terrifying piece of pseudo-horror fiction. Jawbone follows three main protagonists and is also separated into three different scenarios. Two of the protagonists are best friends, rich schoolgirls that go to this bilingual academy. And the other protagonist is their language and literature teacher, Miss Clara. The three different scenarios are these. One is the girls and their two other friends hanging out after school, and worshipping a god that one of them made up, and daring each other to do ritualistic things. In that way, it really reminds me of a lot of dark academia. The second scenario is the experiences, perspectives, and backstory of Miss Clara, who encountered and went through a really traumatic event before moving to the bilingual academy to work as a teacher. And then the third scenario involves Miss Clara having kidnapped one of these girls, taken her to a cabin in the woods somewhere, and tied her up on the floor to do... something. We flip pretty free... We flip pretty free... We flip pretty freely between these three scenarios, learning more about these three characters as we go. And all three of them are villainous, all three of them are unhinged, all three of them are desperately in need of help, and are not getting it. And we get to enjoy and be unsettled by the chaos of what they experience, what they do to each other, what they do to themselves, what they think, what they feel. It's horrifying a lot of the time. And what sets this apart from so many other works that push boundaries of genre and theme is the way in which it's written and translated. This is gorgeous. Jawbone is lyrical, it is poetic, it is so beautifully literary, and the translation by Sarah Booker is absolutely stellar. So many times as I read Jawbone did I stop and just take in a beautiful passage. In spite of how dark and twisted and unsettling so much of Jawbone is, I was captivated by the language. And not just the language, but the interplay of words and phrases and paragraphs. There is very little dialogue in here, so much of it is just description, narrative, tone setting, very, very frank moments that are captured with poetry and unsettling dramatic language. It's absolutely gorgeous. Some people, and they'd be wrong to do so, might call it pretentious. It is not. It is gorgeous, it is confident, it is beautiful, it knows what it's doing. And it's kind of ironic just how beautiful all the language is when you consider how much naivety is going on here. These three characters need help. They are very naive people, including the teacher. They are unguided. They are confused, they are unhinged and unshackled. To give you a brief description of the story itself, you've got Fernanda and Annalise. Annalise is the leader of her group of friends, and she has created this thing called the White God. Her, Fernanda, and two other friends who are siblings, I think, I think, hang out at an abandoned building and dare each other to do stuff while also kind of worshipping this white god that is also a drag queen. Fernanda and Annalise also periodically engage in lesbian acts and quite often talk about the concept of being gay and tease the people around them about queerness in some really, really interesting and kind of unsettling moments of dialogue. Meanwhile, you've got Miss Clara, 
the traumatic incident that she suffered through was that she was working at a school before this one, and she was abused and kidnapped by a group of girls who were called the M&Ms. She also has been struggling with the fact that her mother, who was also a teacher and a very oppressive force, has died, and Miss Clara now has her mother in her head. She literally says, the mother in my head. She is copying the thoughts, feelings, and attitudes of her mother, and listening to a motherly voice in her mind. That's enough to go in with. Jawbone frightens, but what it does very cleverly is that it frightens in different ways by shifting perspective pretty frequently. And the kinds of fear that it shows you, the kinds of fear that it shoves into your face, change depending on the scenario and the character that you're following. Depending on whether or not you're following Annalise, Fernanda, or Miss Clara, the feeling is different, the scenario is different, and the kind of terror that you're experiencing is different. In that way, you are constantly being unsettled in different ways. It's kind of like venturing through a haunted house or riding a scary roller coaster. The layers of fear that get peeled back are really frightening. But this is not strictly a horror novel, not at all. It is simply a frightening piece of literary fiction that explores themes of motherhood, camaraderie, queerness, lust, and especially girlhood and adolescence. There are countless stories out there, films, TV shows, books, comics, that deal with male adolescence, boys growing up, boys will be boys, all of this stuff. This focuses on girlhood, but not in a pink-washed, awkwardly feminized way. These girls are frightening people. These girls are doing awful things. And it is a greatly feminist book in that way, because it reminds you that a girl can be and do anything. It's almost like an entire novel that was written to debunk the concept of being ladylike. It spits in the face of anyone who ever tells a girl to be more ladylike. That's not very ladylike of you, you would say to any of the women in this book. Whiteness plays a huge role in this. The motif of whiteness is referenced by the characters themselves. It is a very on-the-nose theme in this book. And as you read it, you can consider what things in pop culture are white and what whiteness often comes to represent. The first thing I thought of was a wedding dress. Whiteness is typically considered pure. If you are white, you are pure. You are untainted, untarnished, beautiful, and perfect. But in this book, whiteness is fear, and there are constant references to Moby Dick. In Moby Dick, I haven't read it, whiteness is very important. The whale is white, fear is white, and I find that so captivating. Whiteness being an all-encompassing thing that enshrouds you, that overwhelms your senses, that frightens you. It doesn't cloud your vision, but instead does the exact opposite, exposes you to too much. It is a thing that overwhelms and intensifies, and I find that really enticing. And whiteness has often coincided with death in a lot of imagery throughout history. I'm pretty sure white lilies are used at funerals. Whiteness is considered deathly in a lot of cultures and pure in others. And I think the interplay of those very, very different things is fascinating. So this is an incredibly literary book that explores the concept of purity, corruption, adolescence, confusion, sexual awakenings, fighting back against what you think is controlling you, but also bear in mind that these girls are spoiled rich kids that are unshackled and very, very poorly disciplined. And they are capable of being as frightening, as monstrous, as aggressive and abusive as any man. And in that sense, in a very unhinged way, it is a beautifully feminist book. And so many of my favorite, more feminist pieces of literature are ones that frighten and shock and make us feel unsettled. So much Japanese, Korean, and Latin American fiction is so good at portraying feminism as a very different thing. 
something that we're not used to, something that is, in my opinion, very much needed. And I think it's gorgeous, and I am addicted to it. And Jawbone, in many ways, feels like the absolute peak of what I've read so far when it comes to more twisted, genre-bending, literary feminist literature. It'll frighten, it'll shock, it'll make you feel uneasy, it'll make you feel queasy. There are passages in here that will really twist your stomach, and some that you might actually recoil at and go, oh, that wasn't necessary. Just warning you, I loved all of it. It's daring and dark, but at no point is it pretentious or edgy. Everything in here serves a purpose. It is thematically intense. It is dark, it is literary, it is beautifully poetic, gorgeously translated, an absolutely masterful work of Latin American fiction. Monica Ojeda is wonderful, and I urge you to read Jawbone. Subscribe for books.